IndyCar and Formula One. A weird comparison, but kind of a fun one. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get right into the video, guys. This video is actually titled Why IndyCar is Better Than F1. Whoa, trigger warning, right? I don't know about that. Uh, I'm still learning about F1. Uh, I'm very familiar with IndyCar being an American. This is from Donut Media. This will be linked in the description down below. And uh, yeah, let me just say, I don't think at the end of this, I'm going to really think one is better necessarily. Of course, that's just subjective anyway. But I do think it is fun to uh, just play along a little bit and see how they are compared and uh, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, and uh, how that differs uh, from the rival, right? So uh, basically, IndyCar and F1, they're both single seat, open wheel, lightweight race cars that they share in common. But uh, of course, after that, they're way different, way different tires, different aero, different power, everything, right? So uh, let's dive into this and see why uh, this video, why they think IndyCar is better than F1. Here we go. Dig into how IndyCar differs from F1 and why it might be better. Let's go. It's a bold claim. I mean, Formula One looks pretty awesome. I mean, I know somewhat about it. I mean, it's the biggest racing series in the world, right? Uh, I know they're amazing cars and basically the fastest race cars ever on most tracks or all tracks. Uh, they're incredible feats of engineering. Uh, what's crazy is they're so different and they change a lot, right? At every couple years or so or every year even. I know this much that certain teams can kind of, you know, have really good runs or even dominate. Uh, whereas I feel like IndyCar is a little more competitive because it's more of the same cars there's not a drastic difference between teams so that's one point i'm going to say right away for indycar but uh, let's get back to it apart from the windscreen an indycar and a formula one car look like they might be pretty similar but there are some huge differences and the biggest by far is the gold-plated diamond encrusted elephant in the room the cost. yeah a competitive indycar it isn't cheap it can cost around i'm gonna guess formula one's hella expensive uh way more probably like triple what an indycar is indycar is not cheap he just said three million dollars for an indie car. Whoa! Competitive indie car. is that Formula cheap. One car cost? Costs around three million dollars. <laughs> Maybe includes like ten the cost million. Of different parts for various tracks, testing, and enough engines and gearboxes to last an entire season. <sighs> but that's a bargain compared to an F1 car. At checkout, an F1 car is going to ring up between fourteen and twenty million dollars. That's for one car and engine, no spares included. Oh my god! And it god. doesn't even touch the cost to design and develop each of Formula One's ten unique chassis. See each. Of Okay, that's insanity. <laughs> I had no idea. Dude, I legit thought that just just based on nothing. I thought Formula One cars were like, even before this, this video especially, I thought maybe like 5 to 10 million max. I would have leaned towards 5 million. Holy smokes. And there's even more costs actually. Wow. To the Formula One constructors That's are insanity. required to design their own car within the FIA regulations. That's the formula. Every team's chassis and aerodynamics will be a bit different from everyone else's. And it so that really sucks when they crash. <laughs> team can be penalized for copying another car's design. Oh, this might okay. sound familiar. This happened to Racing Point in 2020 when they were fined for having parts too similar to the previous year's Mercedes. Mm. Unlike Formula One, Indy cars are supposed to be similar, and to accomplish this, they use many spec components. Those are parts that teams buy from a third party and are identical right. for everyone. Since the teams don't have to do all the individual R&D for those components, that keeps IndyCar's costs at just a fraction of what's found in F1. The chassis and aerodynamic parts of every IndyCar are designed and built by Dallara, yep. an Italian manufacturer specializing in race cars. They build components for Le Mans, Formula 2 and 3, and even the upcoming next-gen NASCAR. Oh, IndyCar wow, teams simply cool. buy a pre-made chassis from Dallara for $349,000. Hmm, nice. The downside of spec parts is that you don't have individual teams innovating or developing new designs that push the sport forward like you do in Formula One. But everyone having numerous identical parts means that one team can't win simply by out-engineering or outspending their competition. And in F1, one of the biggest targets of engineering and spending is in the engines. Formula One yeah. has four engine manufacturers, Mercedes, Ferrari, Renault, and Honda. Okay. The F1 power unit is the most expensive part of the car, and a single one can cost $11 million. Oh my but God, Mercedes man. has spent a total of 
1.2 billion okay. over seven years to develop their current power unit within the strict FIA regulations. For that price- Are you freaking kidding me with these? Damn, that is insane. I can't wrap my head around this. Talk about a billionaire's playground. I mean, Formula One is just, just like a, a money explosion fest. But Holy Mercedes smokes. has spent a total of 1.2 billion over seven years to develop their current power unit within the strict FIA regulations. Damn. For that price, they've got a state-of-the-art turbo hybrid 1.6 liter V6. That always gets me. A V6, a 1.6 liter. Damn, that's small. Holy smokes. And this thing is turbocharged, he said. And do these still rev high? I did see clips, uh, you know, growing up here and there of Formula One cars revving to like 20,000 RPM, which blows my freaking mind. That is unreal. Uh, do these still rev that high? I know Indy cars still to this day, I believe, rev to 11,000, maybe 12,000 RPM. But geez, man, F1 engines are just on another level. That's For that price, literally they've got unreal. a state-of-the-art turbo hybrid 1.6 liter V6 capable of producing over 1,000 horsepower. IndyCar has wow. just two engine manufacturers. Chevy they got Honda and, and they got Chevrolet. Yep. And teams can choose which engine to buy for their cars. Those engines cost a thrifty 125 grand or about 99% cheaper than an F1 engine. Is that you know, 125 grand for those Indy engines, that's not bad because that's not a slouch. That's a beast. <laughs> you know, Indy cars are still badass, right? I know they're not on that F1 level, but geez, when we're talking about cost ratio, they're pretty damn good, right? I mean, holy smokes. You think about how cheap it is compared to one. Damn, they're a good deal. Does that mean you're getting 99% <laughs> less power? <laughs> no. No, you don't. These are state-of-the-art twin-turbo 2.2 liter V6s capable of 750 horsepower. Jeez, Each still horsepower not bad. in an Indy car costs a measly $167. In F1, wow. you're paying $11,000 per pony. How much power an engine makes depends heavily on how much fuel it consumes. And one of the challenges for F1 engineers is FIA regulations that limit fuel consumption. The total fuel allowed for one Grand Prix is limited to 110 kilograms, around 145 liters. Wow. There's no refueling during pit stops and the fuel flow rate can't exceed 100 kilograms an hour. A thousand horsepower Bugatti Gee, Veyron wow. can drain its 100 liter tank in just 12, 12 minutes. minutes. Developing an engine- See, this is what's cool is I'm still learning a lot about Formula One. And uh, that's the kind of stuff, like, I had no idea they had rules like that. This is really interesting. It makes it extremely strategic, uh, almost to the point, like, like a headache, right? Like, this is really an art form, getting an F1 team, an F1 driver that can drive on that kind of level, and then having an F1 car that can meet all these regulations and win, like... Engine God, that's capable hard, of a thousand horsepower that can last an entire two-hour race with just 135 liters of fuel is a huge right. engineering challenge that it costs is. a lot of money to figure it out. Indy cars don't have the same limitations. Even though their fuel tanks are about half the size at 70 liters, they do refuel during pit stops, and there's no limitation on how much fuel they can use in a race right. or how quickly it flows to the engine. IndyCar engineers don't have to spend as much time thinking about fuel economy, which means power is cheaper and easier than it is in F1. Even though there are no restrictions on fuel consumption, IndyCar does restrict the amount of turbo boost for different conditions. Yeah. Depending on whether the car is qualifying or racing, and depending on the track, cars have between 18 and 22 PSI of boost, which means actual power varies between 550 and 700 horsepower. But drivers can also briefly increase boost to 24 PSI, producing the engine's maximum power with a push to pass button on mm -hmm. the steering wheel. F1's DRS system also yeah. makes passing easier by reducing I've heard drag, of the DRS but system. DRS only works under conditions specified by the FIA and only at certain Those parts sparks of are crazy. track. An IndyCar driver, it's free to push that push the pass button whenever Whatever. they choose. They can use the power to pass like the name says or to defend against a pass. But push Yeah, so that one uh everyone would probably have their own opinion on. That one I'm just going to give the edge to IndyCar. I think it's cool that you can use that boost whenever you want uh, rather than on an F1 track. I know it's different on each track. Uh, you know, there's only certain sections where that's unlocked and then other sections you can't use it. Now, granted, I know it's usually set up for a section that would make sense, uh, but still, you know, I mean, 
the fact that there's a limitation on it is kind of uh, annoying, you know? So the pass is only just my available thought. for a total of about 200 seconds per race varying by track. When to use it and how many times, that's up to the driver. Now, 750 horsepower sounds pretty good to me, and I'm not sure the extra power of a Formula One engine is worth the $10.8 million price difference. Formula One gets criticized for being a series where the deepest pockets often win, right. and runaway costs like these are why the FIA instituted a budget cap of mm. $145 million per team in 2020. But somehow, Mercedes managed to spend $450 million last year, three times the budget cap. So how is yeah, that even possible? Yeah, that's crazy. Well, remember all that engine development they do? That's exempt from the cap, along with a ton of other costs like oh, driver wow. salaries, travel costs, and even marketing. But cash like that can buy a lot of speed. The fastest speed ever recorded in an F1 race was back in 2016 when Valtteri Bottas reached 231 miles Jeez. per hour at the Mexican Grand Prix. Two I had no idea they went that fast. I had no idea Formula 1 could go that fast. Uh, I thought they had too much aerodynamic drag like uh to go that fast but it's clearly they can make them slippery if they want to and also the fact that they just have so much horsepower and lightweight it's, it's incredible right uh 231 at the mexican grand prix wow that is amazing 231 Jeez. miles per hour is pretty fast that's scary it's also slower than 236 miles per yeah, hour. Yeah, Indy cars can go faster than that. Which is what most cars reach during ordinary laps at the Indy 500. Yeah. All that speed can be yours for an annual team budget of just $10 million. $440 million less than Mercedes F1 budget. True. Put that in perspective, $440 million is more than the annual GDP of Tonga. <laughs> now you guys are put back into perspective. <laughs> so with more power and a okay. country's worth of money, why do F1 cars have lower top speed than Indy cars? Well, despite the superficial resemblance, these really are two different series. The car. Yeah. Keep in mind, uh, Formula One. I really, even from my limited knowledge, I, I would, you know, come on. It's pretty obvious that they're designed to, for a much more wider variety of tracks and uh, lots of turns, and they turn fast i mean fast it's more technical and uh, whereas any car of course they have tracks with turns and then ovals as well uh, but either way the indy cars are usually tuned to be a little more slippery a little more fast on the top end right and uh, not known for the blistering blistering lap times that a formula one car can do uh, a because of lack of power but b because they're just they might not technically handle as well uh, I, that's that's my take on it so cars we'll are see. designed for different rules different goals and for their own types of races right. f1 races happen on just two kinds of tracks you got road courses like silverstone and you mm -hmm. got street courses like monaco but in right. addition to road and street circuits indycar also runs on speedways more right. commonly known as ovals even though many of them aren't oval like indy which is kind of a rectangle both f1 and indy cars are developed and configured for the types of tracks they use and a lot of the differences come down to their aero die Dynamics. Yep. F1 aero packages are designed for cornering speed. Aero right. parts like the front ring have small specialized elements to fine tune the car's downforce. If you look closely, you can see differences in these parts between all of the teams and variation yeah. for different racetracks as engineers experiment with new designs to maximize cornering grip. It's hard to say how much F1 aero costs to develop, but most teams have entire departments of engineers Jeez. dedicated to aerodynamics. Even a conservative estimate will be in the millions of dollars. <laughs> that expensive aero wow. limits F1 cars' top speed. F1 cars can produce over five Gs of downforce. Effectively, that means the faster the car That's goes, outrageous. the more it weighs. At five Gs of Now, that's, uh, that sounds a little bit wrong, if I can nitpick here. The faster it goes, you would get more drag, uh, but that doesn't make it way more. Mass uh, is constant no matter what speed you're Downforce, going. Downforce, the engine has to move five times the car's weight, meaning the power to weight ratio is five times worse. Even with a no. thousand horsepower, there's a point where the engine simply can't overcome the weight and drag and go any faster. And that's the aerodynamically limited top speed. Yeah, between engine power and gearing, uh, there's a you know point where it can't overcome the drag, right? can't overcome the resistance, which is like the greatest force at speed, right? Is drag. Uh, but it has nothing to do with like the car weighs a million pounds. 
But all I, that downforce maximizes I could be wrong. What do I grip, which maximizes cornering speed. And the advanced aero and extra power of an F1 car is why on a road course, it will smash an Indy car's lap time. Right. The only track that both of these cars have recently visited is the Circuit of Americas in Texas. At one minute, 37 seconds per race lap, the F1 car is 11 and a half seconds faster than the Indy car. See? Even with Indy car taking a pretty liberal stance on track limits, Indy cars at Austin can't match the F1 car speed. Like the engine and chassis, IndyCar Aero is made up of spec parts. Each team gets the same aerodynamic package mm -hmm. to keep costs down and keep the field competitive. That aero kit costs just 70 grand, and since it's also made by Delera, they'll give you a discount if you buy it at the same time as the chassis. It's like it's like Little Caesars of IndyCar parts. You buy a pizza <laughs> chassis and you get Crazy Bread Aero at a discount. You oh guys my God! Caesars. Don't act like you're <laughs> special. That IndyCar Aero package isn't as sophisticated as what you'd find on an F1 car. The front ring has just three relatively basic aerodynamic elements, whereas F1 cars have five, with mm, numerous weaklets right. and vortex generators. The IndyCar rear wing also includes three elements. F1, they just have to get by with just two. Fat trombone. <laughs> but it has DRS, vortex generators, and wow. a bunch of other little bits and pieces. And that's all due to the biggest cost difference. F1 Aero comes with a team of engineers who are constantly testing and fiddling to optimize for the precise conditions of one specific race. The IndyCar Aero has just three pre-made configurations and only very small amounts of adjustments. Mm -hmm. It's enough to keep like one engineer busy for an entire afternoon. But that discount Aero turns out to be the key to IndyCar's top speed. In its highest downforce configuration, the kit can make just four Gs, or about 2,500 kilograms of downforce. Okay. That's about 500 kilograms less than an F1 car. So even if an Indy car had 1,000 horsepower, it still couldn't outcorner an F1 car. However, on a speedway like one in Indianapolis, an F1 car would be fighting against its own downforce. The Indy car can just switch to its low downforce aero configuration. Yeah. That removes all but a single element. Yeah, they talked about that in the last video I did too, uh, which look for that in the end screen if you didn't see it. I'll, I'll link it down there. It's a, doing really well. It's a good video. Um, that one, they the guy in the original video I was watching uh, mentioned Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Going to Indy, who would win Formula One versus IndyCar? Apparently, he has a video on it. I would like to see it sometime. Definitely on that track. Assume that the IndyCar would would tear down, man. It would it would win uh, probably by a little bit. I, I think it would be an easy win for the IndyCar at that track. One car has, and it's why the IndyCar can reach a higher top speed with just. 700 horses. Formula One tries to institute cost cutting measures, but that's difficult because it still wants to be a showcase for new technology in engineering battles. IndyCar is different. Instead of making individual teams innovations into part of the show, they make it cheaper for teams to compete and mm -hmm. on a more even playing field. And because of that, it's attracted racers from all over. In this year's past Indy 500, eight of the drivers on the grid had F1 experience. That includes wow. Roman Grosjean, Kevin Magnussen from the Haas F1 team, and Marcus Erickson from Alfa Romeo. And he even said, I wouldn't be surprised to see more F1 drivers looking to come here. I prefer racing in IndyCar. Yeah. Wow. The diversity of tracks. Now that's interesting, right? That's going to vary among fans, among drivers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, personally, even again, not an F1 pro at all or, or super fan, but I'm not sure I would see a trend of, you know, a lot of F1 drivers leaving to go to IndyCar. I think that might be a little bit of a stretch. I, I would think. I still think F1 would be the more prestigious league. Uh, you know, clearly more money in it and a, a global audience, right? I mean, F1 is popular all around the world, whereas IndyCar is still going to be limited exposure. Uh, nowhere near the popularity of F1, as far as I know. Drivers makes IndyCar a fan series, too. And its cost-cutting measures have kept ticket prices low. You can go That's watch cool, an yeah. IndyCar race for under 50 bucks. That's and you awesome. you can get a pit and paddock pass for around 100 bones. Paddock access in the F1, that costs thousands of dollars. Oh Those different God. philosophies end up producing lots of Ouch. differences between the two series, including lots of stuff we don't have time to talk about. Kind of like Steve Buscemi and Giselle Bunchen. Alrighty, so there it is. Uh, that is why they think IndyCar is better than F1. So, so yeah, I don't uh, necessarily agree. Uh, I don't think really either one is better than the other. I think it's, I'm glad that they both exist. I think that they're similar enough to make a loose comparison for fun and uh, for conversation, uh, but I'm, they're definitely you know different and clearly have different budgets and technology going on and all that so uh it, it's it is it's kind of fun 
uh, but they're definitely different. And I don't really think one is better than the other. I think some people might like IndyCar better for a couple of reasons. And I think that uh, a lot of people like F1 better for different reasons as well. So tell me what you think of that down below. Is uh, this a fun comparison? Uh, do you kind of agree with me thinking that n neither one is really better than the other? Or do you really think one of them is totally better than the other? Uh, let me know down below what you guys think about that. And uh, of course, please throw a thumbs up and a like on this video. Help this video out. Uh, I do appreciate it. And of course, subscribe. Join our amazing community here and uh, never miss a fun video like this. Check the description out for this original video from Donut Media and uh, other ways you can interact with my channel. My name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. Until next time, guys, catch you later.